But I want to go over to the FCC thing for a little bit, because this is something I wanted to ask you about that I myself am a little foggy on. So what is the situation where Ajit Pai might be stepping down and then this Nathan Singleton person might step in? Like, like what are they trying to do there? Because are they just trying to have this Nathan person until January when a new administration comes in or what exactly are they trying to do there? Unpack that. Totally. For You're not the only one who's confused by this and, and it's confusing on purpose. You know, this is just another one of those situations where we're dealing with both, you know, actual policy, but then also these very like, you know, DC gentlemanly agreements and like traditions and stuff, which, you know, a, are problematic on their face, but B, have now sort of flown out the window in the age of Trumpism, where just like everything is, you know, who knows, right? So um, so here's what's going on. So Nathan Symington, apparently oh. his name is pronounced Symington. Symington, all right. No, 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 I didn't, you know, everybody's been on TV saying Nathan <laughs> Symington, but finally, when he had his hearing, we we all learned uh, it's Symington. Uh, he is this junior staffer in the NTIA, which is like a, a subcategory within the federal government. Um, and he helped draft the petition for the Trump administration's executive order that would have blown up Section 230 and essentially put the FCC and FTC in charge of dictating social media companies' content moderation policies. So, you know, I know we're going to get to Section 230 in a minute, but, um, you know, safe to say, this guy's only real qualification is his allegiance to an outgoing autocrat. Um, and he's like, you know, he's a totally junior staffer. He kind of comes off as like 12 years old in these hearings. And, um, you know, so just it, politics aside, just sort of in terms of like tradition and the way these things are done, like he's just not even close to qualified for the job. Um, but the play here originally was just that Trump want Trump was mad at Mike O'Reilly, who is a Republican FCC commissioner who basically didn't want to go along with this um, social media executive order, largely because it flies in the face of everything the FCC has been saying on every other issue. They're like, oh, we need deregulation. You know, the FCC shouldn't be, you know, in charge of telling internet service providers what to do. And now suddenly they're saying, but we should totally be setting like the specific speech laws of uh, you know what Facebook and Google do that doesn't make any sense, right? Like the, so, Mike O'Reilly, uh, bless his heart, was unwilling to stand for that level of hypocrisy, um, which tells you something, right? Because this guy voted with Ajit Pai on the repeal of net neutrality, so he certainly has some level of tolerance for hypocrisy. But apparently, Trump tested his tolerance for hypocrisy, <laughs> and he basically said he wasn't into this first the social media executive order because it blatantly violates the First Amendment. Um, and so he was summarily fired by Trump, who revoked his nomination and instead nominated this guy Nathan Symington. Okay. It, this all could have stopped there um, because there isn't really a lot of support for Symington within Republic the Republican Senate. Um, because they, you know, they want to get their own picks in, you know, one of their staffers or something like that. Right. Um, and this guy is seen as a Trump guy and an outsider. Um, and so his nomination likely would have just gone nowhere. But now we saw the Wall Street Journal starting to push for this, um, which is a sign that what's happening here is now McConnell has realized that if they can confirm this guy fast enough and get him onto the FCC before Biden can nominate a new chair, we're going to be in a situation, even after Aji Pai steps down, where the FCC will essentially be deadlocked at 2-2, where we'll have two Democratic commissioners, one of whom, likely Jessica Rosenworcel, will become the acting chair. Then Biden will nominate whoever he nominates to become the new chair. Um, but that nomination process will take a while, and McConnell could certainly tie it up in the Senate for a long time. And so then we have this situation where the FCC is deadlocked at a 2-2. So this is really just pure obstructionism. It's just, here's a way that we can slow down the incoming FCC and make it so they can't get anything done for as long as possible, um, which really is just profoundly criminal, right? Like it's one thing in normal times, this would be bad enough. We're in the midst of a pandemic where people are working from home. They're sending their kids to school online. Kids are sitting outside of Taco Bell to get Wi-Fi 
to do their homework. And the FCC has been asleep at the wheel. And now we have uh, you know new FCC leadership coming in who at the very least would pretend to care about this stuff and want to do something about it. And now you've got Mitch McConnell making this incredibly cynical play to basically kneecap that new agency and prevent them from doing anything to help people uh, in the midst of you know what is just an absolutely incredible you know just I don't have enough adjectives to describe the level of like you know situation that we're in public health crisis plus economic crisis plus uh, you know human rights crisis um, and so it's it's really just it's despicable. Um, that said. You know, I think we have a real good shot of stopping this. If we can, you know, McConnell is only going to call a vote on this if he knows he has the votes. And we know that there's some Republicans who are not particularly pleased with what the FCC has been doing, right? Susan Collins, uh, Senator Kennedy in Louisiana, Senator Murkowski all voted on the Congressional Review Act resolution to overrule the FCC. Um, so if even just a couple of those senators go to McConnell and say, hey, we're not wild about this guy that could tank this whole nomination. So, you know, Fight for the Future has a call tool up at battle for the net slash call um, where you can call those senators and a couple other key senators and let them know that you should block this Nathan Symington nomination. Because as you said, it you know, this is a short-lived cynical play, but, uh, you know, we don't have time to waste right now. We, we don't have time for the FCC to be sitting on its hands because of this obstructionism for Mitch McConnell. That's yeah. And, and, and thank goodness for organizations like Fight for the Future and, and digital rights organizations that are holding that front line, because it, it really is up to y'all to just unpack all those just ridiculous obstructionist things where it's like, OK, well, this shithead wants to do this to allow this shithead to be a shithead here. <laughs> and at the end of the day, they just all want to be shitty or shitheads. But we got to unpack how the shit headery works, and that's what we're here for. You got to. If you had asked me like ten years ago when I was a full time touring anarchist punk musician whether I would ever know this level of detail of the Federal Communications Commission's nomination process, I would have been like, <laughs> <laughs> "No, I hope but not." Here, sometimes life comes at you fast. <laughs> here we are. Get your news on with Ron. Did you wanna know what's going on? Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make.